Are Republicans finally leaving him? Well, look, um, the Republicans um, bought the ticket and they're gonna take this ride again. And what Donald Trump is is signaling by his meltdown down in Mar-a-Lago over the last uh, 12 hours is that he's prepared to burn it all down. That they may be done with him, but he is not done with them. And he is- What does that mean? War against oh, what, 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 like, it basically means I'm not going quietly. Um, I'm going to announce next week, um, I don't care, I don't care who I hurt. If you do not nominate me, I will burn the house down. That was conservative pundit Charlie Sykes predicting Trump's next move after his epic midterm failure that has made the Republican Party begin to sour towards him, at least for now. You never know for long. It seems the GOP is now embracing DeSantis, their de facto favorite of the moment after his huge win in the governor's race in Florida. But Sykes reveals why he thinks Trump is not about to easily step away from the limelight. No one's surprised by that, but here's a little more from the conversation as to maybe some potential methods. He is confident that they will cave Charlie, into him again. They are turning on him. Conservative media is turning on him. The donor class is welcoming Ron DeSantis in. It's right. happening. So where exactly does the big fear of Donald Trump lie? He's a senior citizen living in his private home in Florida and New Jersey. He's unemployed. Who's he gonna hurt? He can't even run a business anymore. Tish James has her stiletto on his throat. <clears throat> Yes, well, I have the scars to answer your question here um, because what he's got is he's got 30 to 40 percent of the Republican base that will go with him. And so let's say, you know, in, in some, you know, fantasy world that Ron DeSantis beats Donald Trump, that he, that he actually has the guts to go up against Donald Trump and, you know, face down these threats of destruction. And he beats him, let's say, 60, 40. Um, What's going to happen to that 40 percent? Does Donald Trump ever go away? What Donald Trump's threat is, is that I don't care about the party. I don't care about any of you. I don't care about the country. I don't care about the constitution or about the elections. I'm going to take my ball and go home. Sykes prediction definitely does sound very Trumpian, but Maggie Haberman, a close watcher always has her thumb on Donald Trump's pulse, predicts that Trump may not be left with many options. She put out a massive Twitter thread. Here was the gist of her analysis. Trump is still facing possible action from the DOJ, but the department, despite all the interest in whether they paused for the midterms, was still engaged in grand jury activity in recent weeks regarding Jan 6 and the document boxes case. Trump has extremely few major donors who want to do anything for him right now, and a number of them are having active conversations about the best way to stop him. Trump has made clear he's willing to burn it all down if he doesn't get what he wants, which is maintaining his grip on the product line he's been developing for six years, the Republican Party. So a lot of electeds will have to make a choice they've not had to before. Finally, anyone not a pro who claims to know definitively what DOJ is going to do on either J6 document or the documents case is pushing a line. The special master was the only play Trump had and it's brought some short term embarrassment, but also bought him some time. Either way, Trump or DeSantis, it's gonna be a nightmare. It just matters really how badly you want to scream in the middle of the night. Yeah, I actually have a definitive answer to that for me. But first, I just want to say Charlie Sykes is 100% correct. And Trump still has one card, the Trump card, if you will. And the Trump card is him just going ballistic. That's that's his main go-to move, that's his only move, and that's what he's gonna do here. I think Stephanie Rule is totally incorrect. So, well, let me clarify. On the fact she's correct, conservative media has abandoned him. Uh, the donor class has abandoned him. But remember, in the f first time around in the primaries, he had almost no donor money and he beat 16 Republicans anyway. Then Hillary Clinton out raised them two to one, 1.2 billion to 600 million in the general election and he beat her anyway. So he didn't have the donor class and uh, and so, and then she said, oh, he can't run a business. He's never been able to run a business and he won anyway. So none of those points are salient. They don't affect Donald Trump at all because he has the one thing that he needs and that DeSantis needs, which is the voters. The Republican voters have just showed you that at least eight and a half percent will go, will not vote for him. And that'll make a critical difference in the races. I say eight and a half percent because in Georgia, Kemp outperformed Herschel Walker, the Trump pick, by eight and a half points. 
So there's a very purple state saying we want to vote Republican. That's why we reelected Brian Kemp. But we do not want to vote for Trump Republicans. But that's eight and a half points. It's not the majority of Republicans. That's why Herschel Walker won the primary easily. That's why all of the Trump candidates won their primaries. So what are they going to fight in? What's the arena? DeSantis versus Trump. It's a Republican primary. So this fight is not anywhere near over. In fact, it's just beginning. And I've got it at 50-50. So if they think that it's gonna be easy to beat Donald Trump, they're crazy. I would add too, uh, Chank, that, that that's absolutely right. But I think the thing that we're also missing is that so far, no one's bothered to throw a single punch at the guy. Like we're all out here in the in the in the cheap seats, basically talking about how uh, you know how how like this is Ron DeSantis is like Ron DeSantis is going to take over the Republican Party. That guy hasn't said a word to Donald Trump. Like all of these people in the Republican Party are missing the one thing that they actually need to do to take on Trump, which is to actually take on Trump, to throw a punch, to say one word about him and survive to 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 you know see the end of it, but nobody is. And I mean, until we see Ron DeSantis actually do something about it, it's all just us wish casting that Trump will go away. But at the end of the day, like somebody needs to actually do something. Otherwise, he's not gonna be you know, pulled down from his perch. Good point, my only, my only thought counter that is there is some position of strength. There is some sense of strength that comes off from DeSantis not punching back when Trump's in the middle of a meltdown. Of course, if once he declares they're in the middle of a campaign, he'll have to. But seeing Trump just in between retweeting, retruthing rather QAnon conspiracies and then saying, and DeSantis isn't saying he's gonna just support me blindly and that's not nice to do and calling him desanctimonious and a lightweight. To some degree, he's riding the high of this of, of this win and he's probably thinking, I don't need to stoop right now. I'm on cloud nine and Trump looks like an idiot. Yeah, totally, well, absolutely. But I would say to this to the same point is is while normal people like us out here would absolutely think that and would say like, "Ooh, he is flailing. This doesn't look good." At the same time, what he's doing right now, taking all these throws, like like using his nicknames, doing everything that he does, is what's gotten him power in the past. So for us, for like normal people to see Trump having an absolute meltdown, we would think. Yeah, this guy is like not in good shape. He's losing it right now, but at the same time, that's that's what's gotten him so much success in the past. Like we see him, we see him throwing out the name Ron DeSanctimonious as a sign of weakness because it shows that he's on the defensive, you know, or 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 we would assume so. But he's done the same exact thing with Marco Rubio, with Ted Cruz, with Jeb Bush, and he and he dethroned all of those guys. Yeah, I I partly agree and partly disagree with you guys uh, on all of your points. So let let me just take it one by one. You're right, Brian, he, he did do that and he destroyed Cruz and Rubio, etc. But at the same time, those no one liked those people to begin with. Like mainstream media liked those people, oh, Marco Rubio is definitely going to win. Oh, he's Jeb Bush is the favorite, based on what, right? Because you all yeah. liked him and he was more of a corporate Republican, etc. But the voters didn't actually like any of those guys to begin with. They actually do like Ron DeSantis. So it's Completely a little, agree. Yeah. And that was pre-Trump losing. Twice, technically, and right. so he he does have a lot more baggage. He's shown to be a loser. I mean, they've gotten through they've gone through what three elections now, where the guy has dragged dragged the entire party down with him. So you're absolutely right in that sense. And to some degree, also now it's more interesting ratings wise for these right wing media networks to keep Trump flailing because they already built this superstar. And granted, they would love four more years of it. But he's not going away, everybody realizes now. So they're able to toy with the idea that, oh, if he loses, if he gets beaten, if he gets tossed around, it's just gonna be Trump melting down every day publicly for the next couple of years. And that would be gold to them as well. So the, yeah. another thing that I agree with Ben about is that I think for now, the DeSantis strategy of handing Trump rope and saying, have at it, Hoss, is correct. And he doesn't have to do anything, Brian, because Conservative media is doing it for him. So New York Post, Wall Street Journal, about two thirds of the Fox News hosts are ripping Trump down as we speak. So if I'm Ron DeSantis, I don't wanna throw a punch yet. I want others to, to do some significant body blows to Trump before I have to get my hands dirty. On the other hand, I agree with Brian in that when they finally get into the arena, DeSantis can't just sit back and not say anything. He's, for the Republicans, it's, 
They think in, they don't think like us, they think in a different way. They, for them, you have to show that you're like an alpha male. Whether you actually are an, is, not, is not important, you have to pretend to be one. You have to have the, the showings of one, right? So DeSantis has to come out and be like, mm, me tougher than Trump. Trump the yeah. bad guy, right? And, and Trump's weak, etc. Can he do that? I don't know, he's never shown that before. I've never seen him do it. So the entire, almost the entire right wing media, all the donors, all the Republican politicians versus the MAGA base. I'm telling you, that's 50-50. If you think that, that that race is over, you're nuts. It's not at all over, it's just starting. And is there a significant difference between the two? Let's look at one more clip and discuss. Anybody here would do it. Project to get Judges are a priority. And honestly, we have businesses home. that have been locked down and lives destroyed for over a year, basically say many, many no COVID vaccine together, passports dump them made in China and shipped and here. And Why would we want so many do? important things Can we take them? to us be at the whim of they China? Say. They got the hand motions down and the Sharpies down. No doubt DeSantis has learned a lot from Trump. There is a lot to learn in a burn it down playbook right there. And so the only question that really in my eyes that remains is while they both on policy are very similar and they both are these you know, negative forces in the political world, does DeSantis have the ego based desire to burn the whole system down just to keep himself in the headlines like Trump does? I don't know if anybody on earth does and that might be the one difference that actually makes quite a difference. Yeah, so there's two important things left then. Number one, you just moved the odds for me, Ben, by showing that video and and now I feel bad again. <laughs> so I was so <laughs> excited that maybe, maybe, maybe Trump is gone. But uh, I, I said a little bit before the elections, I, I think Trump's gonna beat DeSantis. Now the elections hurt Trump real bad. And the most important thing is right wing media and they're coming out against Trump. But look at that video. Trump is not copying DeSantis, DeSantis is copying Trump. And that's weakness. A, a strong guy goes and does whatever the hell he wants and what he thinks. He doesn't go around copying the other guy. And so now that doesn't matter today, Oh, this doesn't matter. Who cares, nobody's gonna pay attention to that other than us analyzing it, right? But what's gonna matter when they're in a debate, when they're talking, uh, about one another for months and months and months and Trump just keeps hitting him and hitting him and hitting him and DeSantis can't hit back or can't hit back effectively. I'm moving into 55-45, still Donald Trump advantage. I, I, I would I would tend to agree with you. I think that uh, Ron DeSantis at the end of the day has the charisma of a paper bag. And so that's gonna come into uh, into account a little bit when they're on that debate stage. I mean, Trump, like you said, is is relentless, he will you know, tear anybody's heads off who's in his way. And uh, I think he'll do the same thing with Ron DeSantis. So you're right in the sense that DeSantis right now should just be riding high and sitting, sitting, you know, pretty basically because everybody else is doing his dirty work for him. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, Trump will stop at nothing. He'll go full scorched earth. That's why they brought him in. That's why, why that's why they surrounded him and loved him to begin with because he did it against uh, the Democrats. But We'll see how that works when when that you know beast is unleashed within their own party, and uh, and even if the party is going to be able to be able to recover uh, afterwards, because because when you're dealing with these people, it's so much of a cult of personality around these figures. Like I feel like on the left, generally we uh, we're more about the policy than the actual politician. Like I don't care who's in office as long as they advance the policy positions. I couldn't care less if it was. You know, somebody who's black, white, young, old doesn't matter. I just want the policy positions. But these people, these people have Trump flags. They have like their, their whole identities are predicated on Donald Trump. And so, so you know, it's it's different, and uh, it's a lot different from what happens on the left. And we'll see if if these diehard Trump supporters are going to be able to be able to get pulled off and and go to DeSantis if he becomes the nominee or vice versa. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Brian on that. Last thought is, guys, part of the Trump card is Trump. Also saying, if I don't win this primary, I'm gonna destroy the Republican Party. I'm gonna take it down with me because I'm gonna tell my MAGA guys not to vote for DeSantis. I'm gonna tell MAGA guys either he's gonna run his third party and absolutely doom the Republicans for sure, right? Or he's gonna tell enough MAGA guys to stay at home and not vote for DeSantis that the Democrats have a much better chance. So he's actually, he's in a sense holding the party hostage. Saying, I'm gonna, you know me, I'm Donald Trump. 
I will definitely shoot the hostage. And the right. hostage and, and in this to, case is the Republican Party. And to your point, Shank, also, this guy doesn't give a crap about the Republican Party, uh, evidenced by the fact that he's sitting on 100 million bucks and hasn't given any of it to the Republicans throughout this entire midterm process. And even now, he's purportedly raising money for the raft of Republican Senate candidates who are still in the race, uh, Laxalt, um, Walker, and uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the last one right now. But he's, he's raising money for, for the Republican candidates who are still in the race. If you look, if you like click through his links and find out where the money's actually going, it's only going to him and Walker. And it's going to him 90% compared to Walker's 10%. So like this guy does not care about the party. He's never cared about the party. It wasn't about politics, it's not about policy. It's about him. It's about raising his brand, his profile, money for him and his empire and nobody else. And and I, I agree with that completely. And I agree with Jenk. I've been thinking for some time there's a great chance if he does not even start to come out on top in the primary, he will go third party and that will assure democratic victory. But I do wonder what that'll do for the Republican Party long term because if Trump goes all the way through again and loses again, this might damage and maybe an unrecoverable blow for the Republican Party going forward. Whereas if he goes third party, it'll help us win this time. But what I do think will happen likely is then it gives a perfect opportunity for the Republican Party to then distance themselves from Trump. And with the short memories of the populace being able to say, look, that was just MAGA. We're all separate party, he's running against us and to give them a chance to redeem themselves and be very strong two years later. And maybe the rehabilitation and the public image of the Republican Party back from the dead once again. I, I, I just say to that, like I, I would just caution against, I, I feel like so much of so many of us are waiting for some epiphany on the right and for these people to just wake up one day and be like, whoo, we're, we're, we're awoken from this spell. Trumpism is, is over and we're normal again. Let's get some, let's get some, you know, good uh, constitutional conservatives in there. It ain't gonna happen. Like, I think that, I think that these people are not gonna go back to establishment Republicans. I think that this MAGA brand is it. I think people who support these MAGA candidates aren't gonna support the Mitch McConnells at any point in the future, not in two years or four years. They're gonna keep pushing for these Marjorie Taylor Greene candidates, these these Donald Trump candidates, and they're not gonna go back to the establishment Republicans. Man, any way you slice it, this is gonna be probably the biggest political fight of our lifetimes. Yeah. And and the stakes are the entire Republican Party. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. So really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.